this start to play? What's going on guys? Welcome back to In Retrospect. My name's Cody, and today I thought I'd do something special. So, we're gonna get started on a let's play of my favorite video game of all time, Banjo Kazooie. So, I'm sure if you've seen my In Retrospect on Banjo Kazooie, you already know how much I love this game. And I thought since I know it pretty well, I'm going to try and go ahead and do a 100% run for you guys. And if I get this right, then each episode will be one level, and hopefully I'll be able to 100% it in each recording. Not so sure about Rusty Bucket Bay or Clark Clockwood. That's probably going to take about two hours for Rusty Bucket, and then maybe three for Click Clock just for exploring all the other worlds. But let's get right into it. Hopefully you guys already know the story. Banjo's little sister Tootie gets kidnapped by this evil witch Gruntilda because she is jealous of her beauty. So Gruntilda creates this machine that will steal Tootie's beauty away from her so that Grunty can be hot. And it's up to Banjo and his best friend Kazooie to save the day, but first they have to deal with this shit from bottles. Every single time, he just interrupts the flow just to tell you something you already know. And that rhymed. I don't know why I'm in a rhyming mood today. Um, but hopefully, I'll be able to hit the right button that lets me skip learning all these basic moves and get right down to the point of collecting all the honeycomb pieces in Spiral Mountain, which then give me extra health, and then I can go up to Grunty's Lair and get started on Mumbo's Mountain for you guys. Press A if you want to teach me some basic moves, or press B if you think you're already good enough. Yeah, that's passive-aggressive. Uh, if you think you're good enough, whatever, you don't have to learn anything. But that's very much like Rare's humor, which I love, the sarcastic, this smart-alecky sense of humor. Alright, so hopefully I should have all the moves already, and... We're gonna start off by jumping onto these trash cans and then getting on the roof because up here is a secret life. And BAM! Now we have four tries. Look out for me, I'm an extra flexing banjo statue. Always pumping iron. And I don't know if the carrots and onions are in any other level in Banjo Kazooie. I don't think that's the case, but there we go, there's the extra honeycomb piece. So, if I remember correctly, there should be six. Yep. Alright, so there's six honeycomb pieces to collect before you get a new spot of health. But, yeah. So we're gonna go and grab all of those before we actually start our adventure into Gruntilda's lair. To explore the eight hidden worlds, and I'm John Lovitz. If you guys didn't know, John Lovitz actually narrated the um, the VHS promotional video for Banjo Kazooie. And if you're watching this, I'm sure 99% of you are just gonna be like, "Who the fuck is John Lovitz?" But hey, he was a big, big figure in the 90s. Had his own show called The Critic, where he would play a character that would review movies. Kind of like a parody of a uh, Siskel and Ebert, and they're like, "Who the fuck, Siskel and Ebert? You kids know nothing." <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys had a great holiday season, and I hope you all had a safe and wonderful New Year's. Welcome back. Let's put 2016 behind us, cause goddamn, that was such a shitty year. I'm ready to have some good times in 2017. How about you? Like, comment, and subscribe if you think 2017 is going to be the year to make us up for Harambe- Uh, fuck. Like, comment, and subscribe if you think 2017 is the year we avenge Harambe and all the unnecessary celebrity deaths that happened. And this isn't really that much- Not blah blah blah. I'm coming back into the game. It's been a while for me, so. Forgive me if I stumble on... Bleh, I'm already stumbling. Forgive me if I stumble over my words, because I have no idea what I'm doing 
on a solo let's play. I don't know if I could talk to myself all the time. And it seems like that's what you have to do. And I've already gotten the honeycomb piece over here. So the last one is in the water. In this little cove. Hey, okay, see what I did there? Cove. Another level treasure trove cove. And there we go. We've got all the six pieces of the honeycomb in Spiral Mountain. We got our extra honeycomb of life. And now we are ready to head up the Spiral Mountain itself. Which will take us to Grunty's Lane. Here's a question for you guys. What is your favorite 3D platformer? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear if you guys like Banjo-Kazooie the most, or if you guys prefer like Super Mario 64, Crash Bandicoot, Sonic the Hedgehog, it's some... Eh, Sonic's not really a platformer. Where is he? I don't know, it's open for discussion. But look! Bottles fixed the bridge for us, and now we can go in! And who the hell just... Who builds their dungeon to just look like their face? I mean... I get that she's very narcissistic, but... Come on, it'd be like if I lived in a house of just my face. Actually, you know what? I would totally live in a house that's just my face. Um... That way people know it's mine. <laughs> Oh no! Tootie! Just stuck behind the lasers! This fine contraption, so I'm told, will make me young and tootie old! So... Is this just... An age reversal? Does that mean Tootie is gonna look like that when she gets older regardless? And then Gruntilda used to be just hot and sexy? Oh wait! No, no, actually I just said it. Changes beauty. Never mind, there goes my theory. There goes my game theory. Sorry, Matt Pat. Oh no! They started the machine, and now it's time to begin our adventure! Starting with this jiggy right here, conveniently placed at the very beginning of this lair. Hey, it's me, Mr. Jiggy. Now go and find a picture with the piece missing. Kind of, right? A little bit? I don't know. Alright, so we got our first Jiggy, and now, with that piece, we're able to complete the puzzle that's on the wall, which will lead us into Mumbo's Mountain. So this game, I played a lot when I was a kid, and for whatever reason, I decided to just give it to my cousins. I gave them this game along with Lover, and they ended up selling it, which broke my heart because I didn't get my hands on it again until the re-releases on the Xbox Live Arcade back in 2008, and then I just had to go find myself a copy of Banjo-Kazooie, and luckily I managed to find a complete and box copy on the N64 before the retro game craze happened. And I got it for like 20 bucks, complete in box. Which, back then, that's a really good deal, considering now it would go for like 50, 60 dollars, complete in box. The retro game collecting phase has just skyrocketed, which is both good and bad, I would say. Good in that it's bringing more attention to retro gaming in general. And bad in the fact that all of the prices for the games have skyrocketed. Like, ridiculously. Uh, um, to give you guys an idea, um, I in 2012, I bought a copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day for about 40 bucks. And now, it's around 120, I believe. It's definitely under it's definitely over the $100 mark for the cartridge alone and that's just insane to me. I can't understand how the value of these games just increases so so fucking high. I get that they're not being made anymore, but still it's kind of this bubble of just like collecting just went off immediately and now out of any good game is worth a lot of money. But thankfully now I have pretty much all the games that I really want to collect. 
And um, I tried to do the uh, talent trap there, but I remember that I didn't have it. Um, I'm pretty thankful because I managed to grab all the big games that I wanted for the N64 right before the craze happened. So I've got all the main titles. All that I'm missing really are just like sports games and some obscure uh, one-off games. I think probably now the most expensive game that I'm missing is Bomberman The Second Attack. Because I've already got Clay Fighter, I've got Worms Armageddon, I have Conker's Bad Fur Day. Um, and as far as I know, Bomberman The Second Attack is like the only other game that's above $100. But, I mean, I have the EverDrive 64 now, which I just got a couple days ago, and I'm loving it. In fact, I'm playing Banjo kazooie on the EverDrive right now. And... I'm, I did this because I, one, I wanted to just be able to have all the games that I currently own on one cartridge and that I wouldn't have to risk ruining the games themselves, like damaging the pins or scratching the cartridge. I just wanted them all to be, I just want to have all copies of my games just on one thing, that way I don't have to constantly swap out the carts. Um, but... Now I'm also able to play games that I normally wouldn't have access to, like Bomberman The Second Attack, and um, some Japanese games too. I played a little bit of Custom Robo, which is pretty fucking fun, actually. Uh, so, hopefully now that I have the EverDrive 64, I'll be able to get more in-depth videos on certain games, because now I'm also able to access betas for the games. For example, I can now play the uh, kiosk demo of Majora's Mask. Basically, the not-for-resale carts that were really, really expensive. I now have ROMs of those on this EverDrive. And I'm definitely going to make a review video on my EverDrive. I have the uh, version 2 model. The reason being is that... The version 2 one was good enough for me, and... If you didn't know, there is a third version called the EverDrive version 3, obviously. But... It lets you play, like, every single game for the N64, and the only version that, or the only game that it can't play, the version 2 can't play, which is the one that I have, is Pokemon Stadium 2. And then I think all the games that require the expansion pack are just, they just need a patch in order to work. And that, to me, didn't really justify, like, the $40 price hike for it. And I only got the EverDrive 64 because on Black Friday it was really cheap and I managed to get the second version for under $90. Normally they go for like $120 to $160 at the, at the lowest. And um, I like that I know this game so well that I'm able to just talk and I'm just doing this basically on autopilot. But that's kind of how it should be sometimes because then that way you're able to actually speak and pay attention at the same time. Um, I probably won't be able to do this very well with Banjo-Tooie because I actually didn't get to play Banjo-Tooie until the re-release. And God, is it hard. It is such a hard game. Um, if you don't know about it, I'm, I'm right now, I'm working on the in retrospect for it. Oh shit, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the eggs yet. Um, I'm working on it in retrospect for, uh, Banjo-Tooie, and it's just a massive game compared to Banjo-Kazooie. There's... The levels in there are much bigger. There's way more things that you have to collect, and just the scope of the game is insane compared to the original. Um, I haven't beaten it yet. I'm st I think I'm stuck on Litter Gulch Mine, but I just beat Pterodactyl Land. And uh, I'm probably not going to be able to focus on like keeping up commentary while playing um, Banjo Tooie. But so far we're doing pretty good on Mumbo's Mountain. I think right now we're right now we're learning the egg ability. Um, I don't think I have the uh, the ground pound move, which I would need in order to turn on the the grunty switch. So we got. Alright. Gotta hit him two more times. We hit him once. Oh, shit. Alright, hopefully that doesn't reset 
the counter that considers he got hit. I think it should stay, and hopefully this last hit should do it. Yep. Cool. Alright, now he's going to give us the Jiggy, and then we can go probably collect the rest of the Jinjos at this point, or I might have to look for the uh, Ground Pound move, which, if I remember correctly, is over by the Totem Pole. Yeah, it's at the Totem Pole. Oh shit, this guy. I hate that you can't kill him. There's no way to kill this bull. Then again, I guess that doesn't really make sense how you'd be able to kill the bull. I mean, the thing's massive. Alright, so... Mumbo's Mountain is by far the easiest level. It's just a tutorial level. But, as it goes along... Uh, Treasure Trove Cove isn't really that difficult. I'd say... Rusty Bucket Bay is for sure the worst. But... I don't know. I've been having some issues with... I want to see Freeze Easy Peak, but I don't. I don't know. I think my only problem with Freeze Easy Peak was the Christmas tree. Getting to fly through that actual star at the top. You'll know what I'm talking about when I get to that level. Alright, so. He's filled up our health. Awesome. And thankfully, anytime you go to bottles, he'll be able to refill your health. Not that we really need it. I mean, we're surrounded by all of these. Uh, these uh, B. I don't, I don't know what that's called. Like, the, the things that, the, the how the homes that they build for these. Man, I'm just gonna kill them. Alright, so, this one's simple, you just have to uh, destroy all the little huts. There should be a little goblin in one of the, I guess this one. Yep, there he is. Oh, shit, he got me. No! What the hell? Can't let him hit me twice. It's not cool. Up oh, there's the Jinjo, cool. So we're just missing the purple and the yellow, and the purple one is at the bottom of the hill, closer to where the start point is. And then, if I remember correctly, the yellow one is on the hill where the uh, Stonehenge area is. Right. And then this one I have to remember to leave one totem on there so that I can jump on it and grab the extra life, or the honeycomb piece. Shit. All right, I need to get better. There we go. Is that enough room? Nope. Yeah, there's an extra honeycomb piece. Nope. And there we go. Fly up here. Get that. And uh, uh, not go in first person. That's not what we want. Eh. And then Jiggy. Awesome. Yeah. So. Now that we have that, I'm gonna grab some of these honeycomb pieces just to get my health back, and then there is a Jiggy up here in Mumbo Jumbo's hut's eye. I'm gonna grab that, but I'm not gonna go to Mumbo Jumbo just yet. I'm not gonna turn into the termite. In fact, I'm not sure if I have enough pieces yet. I might still need to get some more. All right, so there's that Jiggy. And right now we are at, I believe, six? Oh, eight. Okay. So all that we're missing now is the Jinjo and then the one at the top of the Termite Mount. So, as long as I just get these and then that Jinjo, we should be good. Right. So, if you haven't noticed, this game is a collectathon, which is good and bad. Um. It's prolonging the game to get you to collect more stuff, but at the same time, it's just artificially adding time, and it is a little annoying to have to try and collect all these, especially if you're playing on the N64 version, because in the N64 version, your music note progress isn't saved, and it's not saved unless you get all of the music notes in one go. So if you leave a level and... If you leave a level or die before you can get all 100 music notes in one try, then it resets and you have to start all over. And that happened to me on Rusty Bucket Bay when I had 95 music notes. Um, when I was recording for the In Retrospect, I t it took me about three hours total to get through Rusty Bucket. And that was mostly because I died right when I was about to get all the music notes. And I swore that I was going to do a 100% run for that episode. 
which hopefully it was worth it. If you guys haven't seen my in retrospect on um, Banjo Kazooie, I'm just gonna shamelessly plug that right now. Check it out on my channel, along with my other in retrospects. Um, I'm back into the swing of things, so I should have two in retrospects a month for you guys. That's the goal every other week. Um, the first week of the month will be dedicated to this new series that I'm going to start up about N64 accessories. And then once I'm through with all the accessories that I have, I'm going to move over to like top tens, um, special videos, you know, stuff like that. And then the second and fourth week of the month, I'm going to be doing in retrospects. And if all goes according to plan, I should have a backlog on those so that I can keep them consistent. And make sure that I have weekly content. Make sure I have weekly content for you guys. It is really hard to talk when you really don't have anything to drink. And I am just gonna take a Coke drink. A, a Coke drink. A Coke break. Pepsi Man! I think that was good. And we're back. Alright, so I've got these tokens. I am missing one Mumbo token to transform. I can't jump on Totem. Now I'll catch on fire like that. But is there stuff at the top? Eggs. So I get up there. Do I need to be a termite? I might need to be. But we need to get one more Mumbo Skull. And where could that be? Oh, that's right. It's probably by the Grunty switch that I forgot to turn on. All right. So scattered throughout all the levels are these little tiles called Grunty Switch. Grunty Switches. And when you ground pound them, they affect the overworld in some way, which would let you get access to a uh, secret Jiggy. They're kind of like the uh, secret stars in Mario 64, but the neat thing about this is that you have to activate them within a level and then go back. Just kind of giving it a neat little connectivity between worlds. Right, so, the, there it is. Awesome. Now, normally the game would be like, yeah, there's nothing up here, just turn around. But, if you're smart, you just keep going and BAM! Secret Jiggy. Awesome. So, now that we've got that, I can go ahead and do the uh, termite level. And I saved the termite one for last, because I need to stay as a termite in order to get that secret Jiggy that you just saw come up above Mumbo's Mountain. And that's because the Talon Trot will not work on that mountain. And the only way to get there is by climbing as a turbine. I feel like I'm saying a lot of the same stuff over and over again. If I am, let me know in the comments. Tell me that I'm being very redundant. All right, so now that he's awake, it's just my token, stand on skull, and press B to see Mighty Mumbo Magic. Not really mighty, all you're doing is turning me into a bug. But, it's a pretty neat bug. Love that he keeps his backpack and his shorts, but now it's more like a uh, skirt, a reverse skirt. I don't know how we would do that. Unless, maybe, maybe the shorts go to his, la his back legs. Kind of a weird way to wear some shorts. Then again. A bug wearing a short wearing shorts is pretty weird. I will say, however, I love the termites inside the inside the fortress because they're like they're so amazed with his shorts and they just want them. Like they're trying to steal the shorts from him. Where did he Did I kill him? Aw. In it there was a termite in here that would just say, Hey, where'd you get those shorts? I want them, give them to me! And then he'll just try and attack you for his shorts. Hey! Where'd you get those shorts? Oh, there he is! Alright, I need to get... There we go! Now we've got all 100 music notes. Yay! We did it! Alright, now I can keep climbing. You gotta be careful, like that. You can't mess up too many times. But thankfully, the termite, uh... 
Termite mode doesn't have any fall damage, so I can just jump from the top of the mountain and land the bottom. And my nose is very stuffy. I just realized that. So excuse me. All right, we're good. All right, so we picked up an extra life, and now we are at the final Jiggy within Mumbo's Mountain. Wait. What did I forget? Wait a minute, we only have nine? Oh, did I forget the, the Jinjo? I think I forgot the Jinjo. Okay. There he is, yeah, we forgot the Jinjo. Shoot! I'm sorry, buddy. Alright, there we go. Now we're good. Now we can go. Now we can leave Mumbo's Mountain. We did it! Oh, I'm so happy. So we have 100% in Mumbo's Mountain. We never have to come back here again. There is literally no reason why. Some of the levels ahead do require you to backtrack after a while because they... In order to get some jiggies, you have to learn a certain move. Like, I know Freeze Easy Peak, and... I want to say Bubble Gloop Swamp require you to learn a move that you... Use a move that you learn in Gobi's Valley. And Gobi's Valley is one of the last ones. Alright, so... Awesome. Shut up, Bottles. We don't need to hear this. I've already got all 100 music notes. And now we have the secret jiggy. That brings us up to 12 jiggies total. And that's about it for today's episode, guys. Once again, thank you so much for stopping by. Go ahead and hit that like button if you like this video. And if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. I provide weekly content, usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's the goal anyway. And I will see you guys later.